Welcome to this week's pack show. Coming up, we've got Darren making the most expensive ratting film in the world. Air America, we've got Charlie over at the SHOT Show in Vegas bringing us all the new innovations and in air rifles from the States. Air Gun Centre's Peter Zamet is answering all your questions in our new series questionnaire. And Phil Price looks at Springer safety in air tech. Before all that, we're off to the front line in Red Squirrel Defence with Jerry Moss and Air Ranger. Jerry Moss is a human force field protecting one of the few remaining populations of the Red Squirrel in the UK. It's his job to keep the Greys at bay and the Reds' refuge secure, and he has a full selection of Daystate air rifles to do it with. If there's even a sniff of the bully boy non-native, he or one of the other Red Squirrel rangers in this part of Cumbria are on it. It's a shock and awe strategy. You see a grey squirrel and you know you've got to get that out of the equation as soon as possible. You do everything in your power or in your knowledge to get that, that grey squirrel at that time because it might be days or weeks until you get a chance at it again or you might never get a chance at it again. This morning there's been a sighting of a grey on a fellow ranger's patch. Jerry and Christian sometimes work in pairs to cover more ground. Four eyes are better than two when dealing with the greys. The plan is we're going to go up this mountain up here on a hunt for grey squirrels. Me and Christian will scan in the area with thermal imaging camera, the FLIR. We'll see what's about. They take their work seriously, blending in beautifully thanks to Jack Pike Clothing. The British clothing company also supports their efforts. I need stuff that's reliable, blends in well with the English countryside and Jack Pike does that for me. Christian is carrying a 40 foot pound Airwolf topped with an MTC scope and a light green eyed monster. Jerry has a 30 foot pound Mark IV Daystate, also topped with the MTC scope. Over time, Jerry and his fellow rangers have honed their skills and increased their success rate. The FLIR thermal imager has been a revelation. The good thing, you know, using thermal imaging, you've got someone scanning with a thermal engine, but you've also got someone scanning different areas. You could have another thermal image at all, but you could be scanning with your eyes. So stuff that maybe Christian might miss, I might see, and vice versa. This is tough terrain. The guys scan and move. Christian spots something. He checks with the scope. One red blob can look like another. This time, robin. it's a robin. <laughs> but if you're looking through you know, a lot of rubbish and you're looking at distance, you know, you're picking out just little heat sources. You've still got to check it out because it just could be part of a grey squirrel, you know. This is not management, it's eradication. The bigger bodied greys not only outcompete the reds but also carry a disease similar to Mixie, a virus called Parapox. It doesn't affect them, but it kills reds. Without the effort from a lot of people over the last, especially 10 years, I suppose, I don't think we'd, we'd have red squirrels here or anywhere in Cumbria, to be honest. Our best chance is by the many feeders. They serve two purposes, supplementing the reds' diet while attracting the greys for the chance of a shot. Unfortunately, the feeders don't look touched and our chance may have been lost today. But then Jerry spots a grey squirrel further down the slope. See? We lose it, then pick it up, then lose it, then it comes straight towards us. Jerry is ready. It stops for just long enough. The 25 yard shot is well executed and another opportunist is removed from the equation. Happy Joe? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> another one less to terrorise our reds. Just checking the feeders here, it appeared from the right hand side. Way off, but luckily it came towards the feeders. But the feeders have not been touched since Tuesdays. Luckily it came just right and sat and waited and just hit it just through the side of the neck there. I think the pallet's gone into the head. Certainly acted that way when I shot it. So yeah, pleased with that. Every squirrel counts, so it's been a successful morning. Now Jerry has traps to check and feeders to fill. Joining us is Daystate's Tony Beelis. 
Day State supports Jerry and the other rangers. We saw this as a good justification, a really good example of where air guns can be used responsibly. So we started to support them with um, supplying rifles, supplying equipment, which is obviously a benefit for us. They've helped us with development on rifles. And also um, we've done some special editions which have allowed us to put a little bit of money their way, but also make them raise their profile, which is obviously important for both Day State and for uh, the Red Squirrel Rangers. If their profile is raised, then it'll attract more volunteers, more donations and uh, to try and do it that way. But I don't think we've got there yet. I think we've still got a bit to go. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed that it's not mainstream story. You'd expect to see this sort of thing. Cute, cuddly, fluffy red squirrels on the news being preserved up in the Cumbria, fighting back the grey horde, but it doesn't seem to come out. We've had fantastic support and sponsorship from Day State. Um, I hope I do my bit for Day State as well. But I've got the kit, this allowed me to have the kit like from a 12 foot pound air rifle to FAC rated air rifles. Every rifle has its own scenario. The Rangers have been the inspiration for some of the sought after Day State's limited edition rifles and Tony has another with him today. So if you want something a bit different, this is the way to go. You won't see too many of these around, only 150 made worldwide with probably half to three quarters of that going abroad. So for the UK, it's probably 40 in the shops, and that'll be it. Jerry is not the inspiration for this model, but he can still shoot with it. If you want to find out more about the work Jerry and Christian do, go to penrithredsquirrels.org.uk. Please get involved if you can. And for more information about the Day States, go to daystate.com. Thank you for that, Jerry. At least you had a lot more success quicker than I did with the squirrels. Over the coming weeks, Jerry and Tony will be bringing you tips and techniques from the forest. Now, it's off to David with hot air. This is hot air. Are you planning to go to the British Shooting Show on between the 14th to the 16th of February? This year, its Airgun City promises to be even bigger than last year, including major manufacturers and retailers, with a wealth of accessories and information on airgunning. There's a try before you buy on the coaching line for youngsters and novices, a 10-metre Olympic match range, action pistol shooting and bell target. Visit shootingshow.co.uk. Brothers Jack and Dean Bale of the Braunton Target Shooting Club came second and third in the Surrey Airgun Open. The competition took place at the National Small Ball Rifle Association's Lord's Robert Centre in Bisley and Dan Rivers, the England Commonwealth Games team member, took the title. Air guns are a matter of pride in Japan. According to the Japan Times, the Japanese government is thinking of lowering the age limit on air guns in order to enable athletes to begin training earlier for major sporting events such as the Olympics. And finally, a grey squirrel has fallen down into a house and caused £7,000 worth of damage. The animal clawed, bit and soiled curtains, furniture, sofa and carpets, eventually setting off a burglar alarm and waking the homeowner, 64-year-old Margaret Boosfield. She let it out of the window. You are now up to date with Hot Air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you very much for that, David. Charlie's been out at the SHOT Show in Vegas checking out what's hot and new for air rifle owners in 2014. Well, the SHOT Show is the kind of place you can come and buy a tornado and a couple of aircraft carriers if you want to, but the technology story this year has actually been about air guns, and most of that technology has been British. Take this Gamo, for example, it has a turbo stabilising system, a kind of rubber padding so you don't get that clunk after you've pulled the trigger. Now, let's go and have a look at the rest of the show. Um, this is the Nitro Piston 2. This is a brand new brake barrel power plant. We're talking about shooting 15% faster, 35% uh, more power. It's light, eh? It's, so it's, that's it is light. Beautiful, beautiful. And what it's, about cocking? It's, it's 10 pounds easier to cock. Oh, really? It feels, we, we like to say it cocks like butter. That's perfect. What about last most important thing, accuracy? Because that, that 
you know, with any of the nitro piston like, accuracy is important. That's, that's the first question that comes up, and we're looking at nearly hole and hole at 35 yards. Oh, you're kidding me. So, that, so that's ptarmigan. Yeah, you're, exactly. You're just, <laughs> so I'm not going to be hungry. Some nights I'm actually going to be able to get those little suckers. So that's fantastic. Jim Shockey there. What style. Talking of style, let's talk to the Tweedy fellows from Webley. What I've got here is our latest version of our VMX rifle. The black synthetic stocks uh, for the UK is 12 foot pound, but we sell it readily up to a thousand feet per second in the US. The latest feature is that he has an integral silencer. This is a multi baffle silencer. Another feature of this rifle is it actually is powered by a gas ram system. So what you've got is super smooth cocking. Also, big cycling performance. And for the Americans, it comes in Muddy Girl, it comes in Blaze, and it comes in three. The Americans love it. They also like us being in bookends. Meanwhile, air gun manufacturer Norica is also pinning its hopes on a gas ram system in 2014. We have these four models. All of them have our gas run system and recoil absorption system. This is a new system we are installing instead of the usual mainspring. And we are also installing a, a washer inside to reduce the recoil in, in the shooting. But air guns aren't the only story here. I'm off to see someone who's very bright in the world of night vision. My name is Lori Kokoruda and I'm the product manager for Bushnell. Night vision for hunters. Uh -huh. This is supposed to be better, more affordable, all that kind of stuff, is that right? Definitely more affordable. You've got the old generation one technology, but it's got limited light amplification. This is more towards the middle of the road, not a Gen 2 device, but definitely better than the original Gen 1 technology. Opening price point on these guys starts at about $299 and goes to about $399. That's US dollars? Yes, sir. You designed this? Yes. What was your brief? How did you set about that? Um, you know, we wanted to make a device that was versatile not only for the hunter, but the everyday user. Someone that owns a lot of land, someone that um, wants to see what's going on on their property. So we designed it with the hunter and everyday consumer in mind. Another optics innovation, Nico Sterling has brought out a way of zooming in with your iPhone camera. Basically take any smartphone, whether it's an iPhone 5, iPhone 4, Samsung Galaxy, simply slide it in. Like so, and then you'll see there, it then creates an image. Remember, this is 10 times optical zoom. These will be available come April this year. Um, this is only a prototype, so that it's not the final finished product. Retailing $59.99. Now, he's testing it on a Rimmy, but it's just as good on an air gun. Here's Greg Quinn from the popular guns blog gunblast.com to talk me through a new red dot laser system. Okay, this is a Laser Max laser, uh, Charlie, made for the Ruger 1022. About 25 yards daytime, uh, because you're not going to pick up the red dot very far out. At nighttime, about as far as your bullet will want to carry you, uh, you can put uh, Ruger, uh, Ruger rifles all come with, with scope rings integrated into the rifle. So you can put your favorite scope on here, you can have your Laser Max laser on here, and then you've got your scope for magnification and you've got your red dot where you can get a quicker target acquisition. And so you can use the flip up sights, mechanical sights, your uh, laser max red laser, and just fire away at those British rabbits. Lots of lovely stuff here, like my new friend the Gamo, which unfortunately is currently only available in the USA. But keep watching our heads and we'll tell you when it comes to your country. Thanks for that, Charlie. You really could have taken me over in your suitcase. Honestly, I would have fitted. Anyway, back to reality. We are off with Peter Zamet at the Air Gun Centre in Essex, who's going to be running through some of the most commonly asked questions. One of the questions we uh, get asked quite a lot is, what sort of equipment should I buy my 10 or 11 year old to start shooting? Here I have two spring rifles. It's a BSA Super Sport which is your sort of conventional brake barrel rifle. It's a full powered rifle, it's quite easy to use, quite light, which is obviously an important consideration with a youngster. And then we have 
the German made Via Art 57, which is again a fairly conventional underlever rifle with a pop up breech. We'd recommend this type of rifle because it's very, very easy to cock, which is important when you've got a youngster because you don't want them to get halfway down, be struggling, or find it too difficult. You do need to spend, we feel, a certain amount to get a, an accurate, consistent, and powerful rifle. Um, these two rifles come in around the 200 pound mark. You can always then add for 50 or 60 pounds. Um, a set of telescopic sights to push them onto the next level. If you then want to spend maybe a little bit more money and go into a more serious uh, piece of kit from day one, this is one that we very, very strongly recommend. This is an Air Arms rifle. It's the Air Arms S200. Incredibly popular and very, very successful. Ever so light and incredibly easy to use. So this is the BSA Ultra. These are both single shot pre-charged rifles, but again, a very light, easy to use rifle, bolt action, and again, very, very popular and very successful with youngsters. So to summarize, for a youngster, you need to make sure that you buy something that is light, easy to work, i.e. easy to cock, accurate and consistent. If you cover all of those bases, things will be fine, you'll get on really good. If you buy something that is too inexpensive, you'll end up with inaccuracy, uh, inconsistency, and your child will end up going fishing. Next, we're off with a man that makes tech tick, Mr. Phil Price. The most important thing you'll ever learn with a spring gun is how to load one safely. So the rule is, as you open the barrel, you pull it down, you feel it cock, hold it securely, place your pellet into the breech, and preferably close it pointing downwards. If it should go off, the pellet will go into the ground. If you don't hold the barrel while it's open, that enormous spring pressure is behind it. If it was to fire, unlikely as that may be, the barrel will swing closed with a huge amount of force. It will very probably damage the gun. And if your thumb or finger gets caught in there, it will be injured, I promise you. And it will be a very nasty injury. So always, always hold the barrel. The same applies to under levers. If you've got the thing cocked, hold onto the lever securely, place your pellet in, then close it facing down, and you'll keep yourself safe. Yes, there are safeties, yes, there are anti-bear traps, but unfortunately, they're small bits of oily metal that can go wrong. Don't trust them, trust good, safe gun handling, and keep yourself safe. Thank you for that one, Phil. Don't forget, coming up in a moment, we've got Darren Spielberg with Big Budget Ratting. But before that, we're just slowing things down a little bit and taking a stroll down memory country lane with James Marchington out with his trusty BSA. I'm going back to my reeds and going for a mooch about in the woods with an old spring powered brake barrel air rifle with open sights. Now, yeah, that's making things hard for myself, but it really takes me back. This is a, a BSA Meteor. Uh, which is the exact same gun I started off with when I was 11 or 12 and I wasted thousands of hours doing exactly this, just walking around the woods with this gun in my hands. And for a bit of authenticity, I've even fetched out the old woolly pulley and DPM camouflage. It's great to have all the modern technology and the you know, fancy pneumatic air rifles with telescopic sights and all the rest of it, but it's a great way of honing your field craft skills and your accuracy. And um, it's a lovely way to spend a nice sunny day. This sort of shooting is all about spotting your quarry in good time before it spots you and then working out a way of creeping in close enough for a shot without spooking it. So you've got to be super stealthy, lots of just gently moving from one shadow to the next and then watching, waiting, listening. If it knows you're there, it's on alert and you'll never get close to it. With a gun like this, you really do need to get close. Trees. Um, there's a squirrel, I think, 
two squirrels just running about gathering up food. See if I can get closer to them. So far so good. Now there's no real cover here so the best I can hope for is just move very slowly and not attract their attention. Made it to the next tree. Oh my goodness, there's one sat there looking at me as well. There's two of them there. Okay, I'm now barely more than 10 yards away from these two squirrels. They're slightly on edge, so I'm just going to sit here for a minute and let them, let them relax a bit. Seen a bit of territorial behaviour there, I think. Um, big fella came piling out the tree and chased the little one off. Ran around the tree a couple of times and the little one's gone away. The big one sat on a branch and scratched himself. Now he's disappeared too. I can hear some crows behind me, they sound a bit agitated about something. Well, there we are. End of the day, time to go home and nothing in the bag to show for it. But I don't mind, I've had a great afternoon, beautiful day to be out. I got really close to some roe deer and had a lovely view of them. Crept up close to some squirrels, almost got a shot. These old spring guns, they really do make you concentrate on your field craft and getting in good and close to the quarry. And that's a challenge in itself. So, enjoyed it enormously and uh, I shall definitely be doing that again. There's plenty of stuff available on YouTube for air gunners. We're now back off with Charlie, who is air streaming YouTube. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Air Gun Hunters TV offers its review of the Viro HW99S this week. Looks like Christmas came, well, at a roundabout Christmas for him. Viewer guitar Gord Magi1 sends in Partridge Hunt 2 by a sweary indigenous hunter gun somewhere in the American or Canadian subarctic. He is out after Partridge with the Crossman Phantom 2-2 with hollow points seated backwards for more stopping power. Good old Cy and Davey from Vermin Hunters TV are just having fun as they say round and about this the film shows three different days shooting over the past week or so, the aim being that you don't need to pay £1400 for a PCP to get great accuracy. Now Squirrel Hunter is delighted to report that he has actually been connecting with squirrels recently using his pellets rather than his emotions. He complains of blank sessions thanks to strange weather and a glut of natural food. Rather bigger than squirrels are the coyotes that Hunt Tube is shooting here with his Benjamin Marauder in 2.5. Now I have been unashamedly American this week so why should I excuse Air Guns of Arizona, especially when it is promoting date state and dairy birds featuring baseball legends Marco Scutaro, Hector Sanchez and Bill Hayes, shooting pigeons and dove on an Arizona dairy farm. Of course, we were not the only channel to be at the SHOT Show. Feeling a bit guilty I didn't make it to the Steger stand, so here is NRA Pub's version of their air gun launches. And here is Firearms Guides film Gamo Whisper G2 New Gamo Air Rifle for 2014 presented at SHOT Show, which looks at that non-clunking new Spanish air rifle. Click on the links to watch the video, or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link, Charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Next up, we're out with Darren, who's got more toys than Hamleys. And this week, he is using about 10 grand's worth of kit to get some of the best ratting footage I have ever seen. Right, the story tonight is, I'm in one of my um, buildings where we store some agricultural machinery and we've got a rat problem. We get the odd rat around the farm, as all farmers do. This one's getting really personal, I mean really, really personal. Lawn tractor that we use extensively around the farm was being serviced over the Christmas break and as you can see, cameraman come in closer. Whilst they were servicing it, the rats have actually been nesting in the engine compartment and nibbling away at my wiring loom. So this is getting really, really personal. Um, plus my darling wife, um, petrified of rats like most girls are, 
and uh, she scared me to come in the buildings and ask me to get on and resolve it. So tonight, what we're going to do is the world's most expensive rat shoot. I'm going to be using thermal, I'm going to be using digital night vision, I'm going to be using FX Cyclone, um, my FAC, FX Cyclone. So we, we've probably got, I don't know, 10, 10 grand's worth of equipment just to shoot a rat. Uh, but we've got to do it. The rat's got to go tonight. If old Lupton shot any squirrels lately, I'd quick play with the FX Cyclone this afternoon in daylight hours. We've dialed it down to 12 foot bound, um, very simple, three, three stage lever here. My middle section here is 12 foot bound, so I'm bang on at 20 meters. I'm using the TAC 30 Hawk um, scope with the SR Pro RET 16 times magnification, Nightmaster 400 IR lamp and uh, prototype digital night vision on the back. I've got my thermal set up on a tripod down there, so that's gonna tell me um, as soon as any rats or anything come out. All linked up to the screen, so I can sit there all nice and happy. And the most important thing, flask of coffee. Um, I've got a feeling though, this isn't gonna take very long. Cheeky little thing, look, just grabbing peanuts. Right, I think we'll call that mission complete and a great success. Let's go retrieve the old rat. That's quite a monster of a rat, actually. Um, perfect headshot, as you can see. A little bit of flipping. Obviously, gloves, a stick, whatever, absolute essential when handling vermin like this because they carry all sorts of wretched diseases. But uh, we'll just have to keep an eye out and see how many more are coming into this uh, little nest. We'll get them. No, that was superb. A big thanks to Darren and a big thank you to all the viewers that have bothered to comment. It's really good to get your feedback. Please continue to do so and like and subscribe to us on Facebook. Mm -hmm.